For today's make, I plan on using the following things. A plaid background stamp. I'm going to use one of the Perfect Plaid's CMS383 stamps for my background. The Love Notes CMS477 stamp. I have the Coordinating Heart dies for the stamps from Simon Says Stamp. It's an exclusive stamp set to Simon Says. You don't have to have the dies. You can fussy cut. Uh, my favorite mixed media heavy stock. I'm using Distress Oxides in Pine Needles and Lucky Clover. We'll see if uh, that color combo works. I'm planning on using Distress Glitter Dust embossing powder, sticky embossing powder, and that means I will most likely also be using my clear embossing ink. And then I plan on using the Tim Holtz uh, from the vault pillow box and bag die set. I will most likely also be adding in some craft stock and maybe another color of ink. So stay tuned, but I plan on using these as my main focal point items. So let's go ahead and get making. Now that I have my papers colored, I have two of them that I will be using for a front and a back. And so I'm going to put them on a little bit of sticky grid to hold them in place because I'm stamping a background stamp on this paper. And so I don't have a lot of room to use my magnet. So I use a sticky grid. I chose the tartan plaid from the Perfect Plaids. And I am now going to switch to pine needles. So this is the Lucky Clover. I'm switching to the pine needles. And I'm going to ink up my stamp. And hopefully we'll have a good contrast between the two greens. This is my hope. Now I also thought I might try this with Rustic Wilderness and maybe Mowed Lawn and see how that looked. Okay, let's give it a shot. not a huge difference. I kind of feel like if I wanted more, you know, I would need to do either dark green archival or I could do the pine needles distress ink. And that would be a more vibrant, dark difference. But I think this is okay. Uh, especially because I don't want the tartan ply to stand out too much against what I'm going to put on it. So I'm going to stick with this. I think I'm really actually happy with it. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. I'm going to stamp the other one. And then we'll get started with our die cutting and decorating. I had two projects planned to make today with the Love Notes stamp set and this die set. So I wanted to, to make one with the paper bag have some very thin craft stock and that came from a set of note cards that I've had forever in my stash. I'm trying to use my stash up and so this is Paper Studio and these card fronts are thin so I just cut it in half so that I would have two pieces for my paper bag and then for the pillow box I made the, the two plaid stamped pieces from the mixed media heavy stock so we'll be making the pillow box out of those and then when we come back i'll show you the two techniques i'm using with the love notes stamps now to decorate the paper bag i have picked the three smallest hearts from the love notes that are up in the corner here. So I pulled those. I'm not using any of these sentiments. I have pulled a sentiment from the Tiny Text CMS 394. Bunch of sentiments on here that you might wanna use. For me, um, and the way that I celebrate St. Patrick's Day, I chose Just One Life. So I thought that would be perfect for this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that across the top here. I have uh, marked in the center with just the tiniest little pencil dot 
where my center is because I'm going to be using these to stamp to make the shamrock and I need to know where that center mark is. Now once I get the hearts stamped in a shamrock shape, I need to draw a stem. So I pulled my Lucky Clover and my Pine Needles uh, Distress Crayon uh, pencils and I'll be drawing that in and I have my watercolor brush to lighten that up. I have added one color of Distress Oxide um, to this round. So I was using Pine Needles and Lucky Clover and since I have three hearts I want three colors and so I went for the lighter Cracks Pistachio that's going to be my base. So I'm going to move these out of the way and I will move the back out of the way and let's get started stamping. Now I'm going to be stamping freehand, which you know always makes me nervous, but I think it will work. So this being the lightest, you want to be sure you get it nice and inked up so that there's a lot. It's really opaque on there and I'm going to get that point on the dot, push down, and then let's go to the other two. I'm gonna turn it just a little bit, and I'm gonna try and line up that point. Let's see if I did it. Pretty close, okay. And one more. Point over there. There we go. All right. Now let's dry it. Okay, our medium heart is in Lucky Clover. Now the, it's going to be much more opaque because it's second layer. Oops, got that. Now for the pine needles and our tiniest heart. I'm going to fold this so I can see where that's going to go. Okay. And I'm going to use the Lucky Clover and I'm just going to freehand it down a little bit wider at the bottom, just go across kind of like that. Okay. Now when you look at that, you think, um, that doesn't match, she just ruined it. And I want you to watch this magic happen. So I'm gonna take the water brush, and okay. Now watch. Here I'll zoom in.
Isn't that so cool? It matches the Lucky Clover. I can't believe it. It's fantastic. Well, that last bit may have been out of your view because I zoomed in too much, but what I did was take my one of my stamp because I had them right here and I know where my ruler is. And I just took the pine needles and I just went along the edge and did the same thing on all four edges. Just drew around it. I'm not gonna wet it. I'm just gonna leave it be. And so that's what I ended up with. I think it's cute and decorative. I've cut the plaid backgrounds out of the pillbox die, so I have both sides. And now I want to make a 3D clover to go on it. So I have pulled the tiniest heart for something else. I'll tell you what that is in a second. Um, but I also pulled the largest of the small hearts and I pulled this one from the corner that's fairly solid. I needed a solid heart for this technique, and so the sketchy ones wouldn't work for this. Neither would the outline ones. I need solid. So it would have to be one of the small ones or this one in the corner that just has that one little highlight out of it. So that's why I chose that one. I have pulled the corresponding dies for those, and I also have a few pieces of mixed media heavy stock that I'm gonna be using for this. This is a little bit of a messy technique. So the other things that I have are Distress uh, Embossing Ink, and I'm going to be stamping the large heart in Distress Embossing Ink, and then using embossing powder that is the sticky embossing powder. So when you heat it, it becomes sticky. And then I'm going to put Distress Glitter Dust into the sticky so that I end up with glitter hearts to make into a, a glittered clover. And then I want these to be two-dimensional. So I will have these be the glittered hearts. And then again, I will stamp the, the largest of the small hearts in pine needles. And I am going to emboss it in Cracked Pistachio Embossing Glaze. Then I'll cut them out and I am going to put them on the uh, pillow box so it's kind of a dimensional focal point that will be on the front of the pillow box with a little bit of, um, you know, something glittery. Now, I have tried this already and so I did this with the tiny heart and I want to show you because I decided to add something to the pillow box. So I put it in the center of that little clover and isn't that glitter great? And then I um, went around it with uh, brushed corduroy distress ink. I just think it looks fabulous. It's a perfect little touch, just a little bit of sparkle uh, to that just one life sentiment for this. So I'm really, really happy with that. So that's why I have these sitting out here to show you what I did with that. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside because I won't be using them for the pillow box, just these two. And I'm gonna get stamping. I'll do this in fast forward, but I'm gonna be stamping um, just the large hearts in the embossing ink, and then I'll do the, the glaze, and then we'll cut.
cut. And so now, I since I did six, if you're going to go to the trouble, you might as well do several so that you can either make a second project or you can choose in case you mess one up. And I am always worried I'm going to mess one or more up. So, you know, uh, I make several. So I can go through and choose the ones that I think I got centered the best. Now this one, I didn't use that Gina K technique. And so um, not very many of them are centered well with an even outer ring. That's okay. I'll just pick three that are kind of close, I guess. And we'll just go with it. This one. And actually, yeah, those three. Okay. So they're going to go like this. And then in the center will be these. And you can see, I also didn't use the little tip for getting the die centered on it from Gina on that one either. But these I did. And look at that perfection. I love it. So um, on these, I can just pick any that I want. And they will go like that. And then, to top it off, I can do what I did on the last one, which is, let me find, because you know, same thing, I didn't do just one of these. I think this one might be the closest. Ah, this one. Okay. And I can do another one right in the center, just like that. Love it. Okay. Um, so... I have inked, I put my adhesive on the sides, let me adhere this, and then I will ink around all of these before I put them on the pillow box. Okay. <laughs> This is still drying, but I thought I would show you the last couple of things that I did. So I stamped the Just One Life Sentiment from the Tiny Text and Pine Needles and then embossed it again in the Cracked Pistachio Embossing Glaze, just like the small smaller hearts. Then went around it with Walnut um, ink and just attached it on. I just trimmed it with my scissors and so it's imperfect, kind of like the hearts aren't exactly perfect and even. So once they dry, they'll be completely secured and I left them so that they, you know, these can stick up. They don't have to be completely stuck down and you can see the top ones aren't even touching. They're all adhered at the center only. You also saw me cut, I just freehanded the stem, just like I did when I was coloring it, but this time just with scissors. So I took and I just cut up this way and then cut up this way, use this bottom edge as the bottom of my shamrock stem. And then I just glued it in right between those two hearts. And there you have it, a very sparkly St. Patrick's Day goodie box that you can give to a friend or someone. And here is our Just One Life little bag that you could put a gift card in for someone as well, or just a little note, something like that. You could also attach this to the front of a card if you wanted to send it in the mail. And these two came together really, really quickly. It was a lot of fun. As always, if you have any questions about these projects, 
please leave a comment in the comment section for this video or on my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. I'll be glad to try and get back to you as quickly as I can and answer to the best of my ability. So if you also want any of the products to make these, and if you don't have them, I have them linked in the description for this video. Also, they are at the end of the blog post for this project on my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching and for all of your support. Hope that you are enjoying this series so far. I know this is only our second uh, episode, but I have lots of other things planned. So thank you so much for watching and I want to wish you a very creative day.